It's a blockbuster debut for uh, Nike on uh, D Street. Nike's IPO has rocketed on listing its or listing. It has opened at 2018 rupees. That's up 80 percent. It is the best listing after a startup, uh, for a startup after Zomato. The founder of Falguni Nair's net worth has hit 6.5 billion dollars at the age of 58. She's become India's richest self-made woman billionaire. Nike ended the day at 2,208, up 96.3 percent from its offer price. So it is a fantastic, fantastic day. Earlier on uh, today, we spoke uh, to Falguni as well. Let's listen in to what she said in a little while. First, the significance of what this is all about. Falguni Nair with her business partner and actor Katrina Kaif at the stellar IPO listing of Nair's startup, Nika. The online beauty startup opened 80% higher, making the former banker India's richest self-made woman billionaire, worth about $6.5 billion according to Bloomberg. Her son and daughter, who are also executive directors, feel this is just one stop along the way. We're very clear that we this is really just the beginning and it's just the start. We have to put our heads down and continue working. Uh, there's a very long journey ahead and we really just see this as one stop along the way uh, and not the ultimate destination. The reality is our consumers are young, uh, generally young millennials and Generation Z uh, and they do enjoy uh, spending time on social media. So a great way for us to connect with them on a platform where they feel comfortable. And so we've always leveraged that effectively and we'll continue to do so going forward. The stock closed up 9.4% and ended the day at 2,208 rupees per share, up 96.3% from the issue price of 1,125 rupees a share. With market cap crossing 1 lakh crore rupees on day one, the Nika stock is truly driving optimism and setting a fresh trend on stock exchanges. Sakshi Bajaj for NDTV. At Nika. Your beauty is not just our business, it's our path. What a day it's been today for the online beauty, makeup, fashion site, Nika. It means heroine in Sanskrit and it really is the heroine of the day today, listing at uh, nearly 89% above its offer price. And joining me today is someone who's got every reason to celebrate the driving force behind Nika, Falguni Nair. And, uh, Ms. Nair, congratulations. And did you, did you expect this already uh, in the early morning trade? It crossed one lakh crore market cap. And uh, Bloomberg is now saying you're India's richest self-made woman billionaire. Thank you, uh, Sonia. I think uh, we are just trying to build a, a great company that is well loved by consumers. And I think a good... Uh, uh, market reception is, uh, is, is very encouraging. So yes, I do agree that it calls for celebration sometime today. <laughs> it's, it's been, what a journey it's actually been. Is this something uh, you expected? I mean, the fantastic bit is that you're, it's also a woman-led unicorn. It's also one of the few profitable unicorns. It's really rewritten. So many of the stories we've seen around unicorns, IPOs, about women-led uh, businesses, what would you say today when you look at the journey that you made to get here? I think um, I, you know, I, I, I had been an IPO banker and taken a lot of companies to the IPO and that gave me an excitement to want to start an entrepreneurial journey of my own. So today culminating in the IPO is a, is a fantastic feeling that, you know, uh, one has come um, so far and developed the maturity to be able to be a listed and traded player in, in the capital markets. Mm -hmm. and you said also today that you actually uh, decided to take this leap, this leap of faith as it were, uh, backed of course with your experience just before you turned uh, 50. So you were actually defied all stereotypes also to make it here. What's the biggest learning you have or the learning you'd like to share with all our viewers tonight who I think will now be looking up to you as a mentor role model? No, I think there is definitely a learning that age is no bar, for sure. Uh, I hate uh, being, uh, I, I, I hate uh, being counted as women entrepreneur or women this thing. So, but yes, I think uh, one has to uh, break all stereotypes, including gender stereotypes. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you think is your biggest learning? 
I think the biggest learning is the power of technology. I think when I started this journey, I was embracing e-commerce and internet, but I think the power of technology and its ability to do complex and uh, you know multiple tasks at scale and also very agile and uh, personalized uh, you know uh, personalized conversations with millions of customers simultaneously. And I think all this has been big discoveries that I've really enjoyed uh, learning about and, of course, implementing it in our company. And uh, how do you think really because uh, how did the idea, you said that, uh, of course, that you had taken other companies to IPO, but the fact that it was a need perhaps that uh, many may not have felt because you're so used to buying makeup from like, you know, just the store, the brand. How did you think this would translate into something which grew also so rapidly? It was interesting. We saw Katrina Kef also at your listing today as one of your shareholders. What did you see as the opening in the market and what do you think really clicked and made it uh, take off? Uh, do you think the lockdown helped as well in terms of people just switching to online sites? I think in 2012 when I started the business, I think beauty was a very big business both in Asia like Japan and South Korea as well as Europe and US and somehow in India the beauty business was not taking off there were adversities in terms of India as a li li large geographical country and in the nascent stage of the business it was hard to meet uh, the needs of such a large geographically diverse and uh, you know also ethnically diverse country uh, with what they like and I think like, I felt that with e-commerce uh, we can service this category much better and that's how we decided to set up a e vertical commerce company focus only on beauty I also believe that uh, education was at the corner of uh, cornerstone of beauty consumption and for us to be able to grow the beauty consumption we needed to educate the customer and again digitally that is so po uh, very easily possible to educate customers uh, you know at scale and and through that education create demand for products and I think Nika in many ways has created the beauty industry in the country. You may be aware that we have a, we own a brand jointly with Katrina Kev. Mm -hmm. It's called K Beauty. It's a brand that we started together and she's been very instrumental in helping us build the brand. I mean, she's a joint owner and also she's been, she's conceptualized the brand and we are building it together. So I think she's a business partner to Nika and that's how she was here today. And uh, also, I think, also democratize it, because now it doesn't matter where you are, really. So did you find that interesting, that the kind of different uh, demands or the needs, uh, what did it teach you about India and what, say, perhaps uh, beauty requirements or needs were or thoughts were? Because uh, what did this whole journey teach you? I think uh, Indian consumer, deep insight into Indian consumer and how they consume. And I think from early days, you know, I was looking at signs of whether consumer in Varanasi consumes different products than in Delhi. And to our surprise, no. And even today, we keep saying that when we look at data of tier 2 and tier 3 consumption, at least on our side, it is very similar to consumption in tier 1. So there is a similar aspirational consumer who wants to consume similar brands, uh, even in smaller cities in the country. Mm -hmm. And I think learning about a much larger India of today beyond Bombay and Delhi has been the most fascinating learning for both me as well as Anshit and Advaita mm -hmm. who are with me in this business. And uh, you mentioned uh, that you don't like labels, you don't want to be known necessarily as a woman, as a self-made woman billionaire or as uh, it's about, it's not about gender or beauty as such, you're a business person. But it remains the fact that this is usually an area and especially the startup area, we don't see so many uh, women business role models was it difficult for you at all did you have to battle any stereotypes or did you find it uh, a level playing field no I think I have been very uh, fortunate uh, whether it was uh, how I grew up as an equal in a family uh, you know where I think there was no difference between a boy and a girl in terms of the kind of commitment they needed to show for towards education or towards work uh, and I, I enjoyed similar support system uh, you know, all throughout, you know, from even my spouse, Sanjay. So I don't think in our home there is ever a conversation about, oh, women should not commit themselves to this. I think entrepreneurship is all about deep, deep commitment of time and energy and passion to something that you feel uh, so passionately about. And I think I've been fortunate to be able to pursue my journey without, uh, you know, without any judgment. 
And what's wonderful also in the startup world is that we see so many uh, people who are really first generation uh, business people and uh, suddenly billionaires. So in that sense, it's really an inspirational, aspirational um, uh, model for uh, India today and young people. Do you find young people coming up to you all the time? And uh, do you think that's actually nice that you don't have to, it doesn't matter what you're, that you're, whether you're from a business family or not to make billions today? Yeah, of course. I've always seen that a lot of young, uh, uh, young millennials, as I call them, or Gen Z, they are very passionate about uh, creating and building something. They are always looking at new ideas. And when I have conversations with them, I find it very exciting, both for them. They are learning from me, but I'm also equally learning from them. Right. And uh, of course, I would made this point also about the profitability. And the thing is that Nika is one of the few uh, unicorns and the IPOs currently, which is actually profitable. So you'll always have the experts or the uh, market experts will say, you know, be a little bit careful on unicorns because many of them are not in profit yet. You need to be looking at the numbers carefully. Do you think the fact the profitability of your, IP, uh, of your company has also given it an edge today in its IPO? Yeah, of course. I think it's not just about the profitability, but it's also because profitability is also a uh, balance between uh, growth and also, you know, uh, pace of growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis the kind of uh, unit economics you're generating from your existing business. I think Nika has been very um, frugal on capital uh, consumption and also it's been very respectful of the capital it has and uh, made, made it work long, uh, you know, go further. And I think that discipline of... Uh, chasing the right unit economic metrics and also trying to be frugal and um, you know very respectful of the capital that you have i think nika will continue on that journey mm -hmm. and there been so there's been so much hype about many blockbuster ipos and unicorns coming out and one of the tags i guess you'll have to get used to is amongst the world's richest uh, now as i said uh, uh, wealthiest uh, in india as well the 18th richest uh, family apparently the latest uh, bloomberg index what does that mean to you when you hear this tag of amongst the world's richest? I don't think anything changes. I think we'll remain the same. And uh, I think uh, we are a family that's very passionate about, uh, uh, you know, creating and building something. We, we respect hard work. We respect, I think what is important about NICA is great corporate governance. I think earlier today you must have seen our bankers and everybody will say that NICA has been a a young company with the corporate governance standards have been fantastic. I think we want to be very balanced on serving all the stakeholders in an equal manner. Mm -hmm. I think the new age companies have to show a different uh, way of functioning. That you, I think today's generation expects you to have a much more measured and balanced growth approach. And I think Nika is clearly going to value that. And we also as a, comp as a family are going to value that. Fantastic, but I hope you're going to have a celebration tonight, which will be extra special because this really is a, well, a one of a kind day. Uh, I think uh, we are planning to go for dinner to our favorite restaurant, which happens to be at Four Seasons, close to our home. But yes, <laughs> that's the plan. Okay, wonderful. Well, we wish you all the best. As I said, it's great to see this blockbuster listing and uh, congratulations for all the hard work that has gone into today. We wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sonia. Well, what a fantastic debut uh, on the Lal Street. Joining us now, Dhirendra Kumar, founder and chief executive of Value Research. Sanchita Mukherjee joins us as well, as does Sunil uh, Shanghai, the chairman of the Fiki Capital Markets uh, Committee. Thank you all very much for being with us. What a fantastic day. Sanchita, now... <laughs> It's remarkable this year, 40 companies have listed on the domestic stock exchange, the highest since 2016. Whoever thought we went through COVID or are still going through COVID. Um, what is this, before we talk about Nika, what is this a part of? Um, another major IPO, what is this a part of, given the state of the economy? Well, I must say that India right now is almost a sinusure of the globe. And there is so much of focus on India as an economy, as, a, as capital markets, uh, and it has become very conducive for Indian companies uh, in the new age to be looked upon as unicorns. And we have, I think, three uh, decacorns, which are $10 billion valuation companies. Now, if I were to talk about why this has happened, 
post covid it is not uh, it is not despite the pandemic it is because of the pandemic and it is because of the spirit of entrepreneurship that companies have been able to identify the changing consumer lifestyle the whole lockdown and the social distancing that has been brought about this humongous digital push and the adoption of new age technologies can, uh, ca- companies have been able to identify right. and they've been able to tweak and swivel around to the new changing needs of the customer with focus on the market and customer and that's the proof of the pudding that we're eating right now yep so uh, i mean indian companies if you were to look at it they have adopted digital like how they have used every rule in the book from disruptive technologies to artificial intelligence internet of things data analytics robotics and look at the diaspora in the indian markets it's varied yeah no, that's in fact have... my next question to sunil sangai sunil uh... It's all over the place. Our, you know, our unicorns and and their areas of experience, from food delivery to cosmetics to so many other areas. Uh, what does this say about the breadth of some of our emerging companies? Vishnu, purely from the capital markets perspective, if you see, there is one common thread, and which is very interesting, and we need to really celebrate this. Uh, in the last 31 years which i have spent in the capital market we have always heard that we are a capital starved country right we don't have capital we don't get capital the way china gets i mean look at the situation three companies put together all the three names which you took they have raised around uh, and the market cap is around 50 billion dollars plus when did we get 50 billion dollars plus uh, capital so from capital starved country we are actually becoming capital surplus country and we should actually celebrate this, this is really a big big landmark Yeah. why is this happening uh, is because we have come up with a really a very nice combination and uh, you just uh, heard falguni talking about that professional capital backed by the professional management and the professional governance we brought in professional governance which actually helped bringing in this capital yeah and it's a celebration time for all of us not only just the entrepreneur but also from the consumer for because they embrace these business models and Uh, Dhirendra Kumar, I, you know what? What's astounding um, is um, the entrepreneurship and the spirit of entrepreneurship for somebody who has pursued this at the age of fifty. Um, you know, with a company which is relatively new, to actually push this to this level in a short period of time just shows incredible courage uh, and incredible conviction, the willingness to take risks and to convince others. to fund a vision that's incredible i mean that's what nike today is all about right forget about the cosmetics let's talk about the vision i mean i i yeah, find that undoubtedly. inspiring undoubtedly you know this is a huge achievement and uh, looking at the scale looking at visualizing that this is a scalable business and all her observation that india is a uniform market similar aspiration and maybe the pandemic has played a catalyst role uh, in the whole uh, in all this uh, the education bit what she, what she is telling about uh, but you know i'm still a little apprehensive on one front that you know here is a company uh, which is selling cosmetics and it is a remarkable company it's a very impressive company it has great governance great you know a uh, great management uh, been able to visualize something which was not there uh but is it really that 1 lakh crore capitalization justified you know uh, when i compare this and the closest one which comes to in the listing of capitalization is bharat petroleum right or godrej consumer goods you know they are 50 year old 100 year old company you know and when i see that somebody has you know there there has been the capital has been poured into this business this is a promising business i don't know what the future is in store we are everybody is very optimistic it this company makes 60 crore but you know valuing it at 100000 crore uh and when it will justify so th- there there is a possibility investors should be little cautious about this uh if, you know reason to be very optimistic but you know there can, it, there is a possibility that you know anything as, uh, this company might be a great company but the, is this company a great company at 100000 crore right no the, absolutely so you know i mean there is exuberance at the markets a great deal of enthusiasm a lot of it would be uh, would certainly be g- good news but uh, is it a bit of a bubble i think that's the question which needs to be asked uh, and uh, you know i mean will these expectations come down over a period of time but 
uh, we can't prejudge that. I think it's a great day yep. for the markets. I think it's a great day for Nike and the spirit of entrepreneurship. I'd like to thank all three of you very much for being with us. We're out of time on left, right and center. It's time for this short break.